Hello everyone, welcome to our brand new series of Kleist Conversation with you. For those who are new to us, Kleist Conversation is a channel that discuss and share insights about health and wellness. During our last season, we had uh, various dialogues with our senior wellness consultant Cadence on various topics such as diet and uh, skincare. In this brand new series, we want to listen to your life stories. We hope that through these life stories, uh, other people can feel connected and find strength in their daily lives. During this inaugural episode, we have invited two special mommy influencers to share with us more about their motherhood journey. Let's welcome Seng Yi Sing, also known as Glorious, and Eunice Tan, also known as Eunice Kitty Tan. Hello Yi Sing and Eunice, uh, thanks so much for taking time today to uh, join us at the Christ Conversation. Maybe you all want to introduce yourself, maybe Eunice first? Hi, I'm Eunice. Uh, my Instagram handle is Eunice Kitty Tan. So people always call me Mama Eunice because I'm a mother of two. Who cannot see you. How about Ising? So hi guys, I'm uh, Ising. I'm a new mom. Uh, currently having only one kid and she's called Potato Riley. <laughs> oh, really very cute name, uh, Potato Riley. Yeah. Okay, so maybe uh, when we first, we're, today we'll be talking more about the motherhood journey. Uh, so maybe the first question I would like to pose y'all is uh, What's your perception of a motherhood before becoming a mother? Yeah. So maybe uh, Eunice, you want to start first? Uh, for me, it's very simple I thought that is What I see is that uh, Of what my mother uh, is So my mother is so easy She takes care of three kids by herself Because my father is working So I thought that motherhood is very simple You just need to bring your kids to school Feed them well <laughs> and bathe them and make sure that they go tuition yeah that's the most <laughs> yeah you must be going a lot of tuition when you were young <laughs> yeah oh, really? i hate tuition and because the tuition teacher quite quite uh, crazy one but i don't know why my mother still sent us there so, <laughs> so i think like being a mother is very simple you just make sure that all the kids necessities are being met and i think it will be good enough but when i really become a mother i feel that it's so it's not easy at all because i I think that uh, the first thing is that I will have lack of sleep but I don't think that my mother has lack of sleep because from what I see her she's actually uh, every day waking up if earlier than all of us but sleeping later than all of us so I thought that uh, this there isn't any lack of sleep for her but uh, this is what I feel but when you go through it then you realise that <laughs> the lack of sleep is really quite uh, real, real. Yeah, real. <laughs> <laughs> real. Oh, <I'm> <laughs> um, I guess I was a bit. I didn't really bother whether you know uh, what sticks about being a mom, because I thought that like oh it's just like you know working, <laughs> just you know you're working at home looking after a, a baby or a kid. So for me, it's uh I thought it's gonna be easy like what you thought so, but I've never like look at what my mom did because uh when I was young I was taken care by my grandma. and then after that I go for childcare. So all along right I always thought that, oh maybe you know just to childcare law or something like that <laughs> so I never thought that it's, uh, it's a new journey I would say uh, a lot of things is very new but I'm glad that I have a lot of mommy friends like Eunice that actually you know, bring me across to each stage or not I will be very lost firstly and secondly I will be um, yeah I think I will be still at home uh, right now taking care of Riley <laughs> <laughs> I guess being a first time mom there's really a lot of things to learn huh? yeah a lot of a lot. Uh, uncertainties things that you don't really know correct yeah so when you first found out about your pregnancy how do you feel a confused <laughs> <laughs> confused and um, excited la. I would say it's a mix because when I was confused I was like oh what should I do next? Because I don't know. Like even when going to gynae or looking for the right gynae, I also don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that I didn't know what to do. But at the same time, I'm quite excited to have my own little me. Yeah. So this is a mix of a uh, feel. So in, during my whole pregnancy journey, I will just you know play back, you know maybe watch some shows, dramas, and then don't think so much. Maybe when things come, then come. That's what uh, people give me the advice. I don't worry so much. Take care of yourself first. Uh, <laughs> so let the nature take its course. Yeah, just let it be. Ah, okay, okay. How about Eunice, your first pregnancy and your second pregnancy? Were there any difference? Uh, my first pregnancy, I think it's, uh, there's a huge difference. I think my first pregnancy is not my first one because I had an ectopic pregnancy before that. Oh. So my first one is actually my second pregnancy. Oh. So my first pregnancy, when I, when I got to know it, I was very excited. Really like, <laughs> like, easy, very excited. But, I was confused because uh, there isn't an egg that is forming uh, So that's the confused part 
So, so to me that I was very upset during my first pregnancy. So my second pregnancy with my which is my first one, I took extra care to make sure that uh, everything is going well, everything is going smooth. So my second pregnancy, I was very very excited. So when it comes to the third pregnancy, <laughs> everything is okay lah. Been there, done that, and just go with the flow. But I do, I do agree with Ising is that we really need to rest more. Mm. Yeah, cause it's really just need to take care of uh, the mom, and everything will be much easier. Mm. Were there any difference in your lifestyle when you were having your pregnancy? I mean, things that you used to do and you have to quit or maybe things that you especially take care of yourself, you know? Drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so you stopped drinking coffee? Yeah, I stopped drinking coffee. Oh. And then recently I went back to drink coffee. I feel that the caffeine is too much for me. Okay. So I, I don't know what to keep me awake right now. Cheating <laughs> bread. <laughs> 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 uh, for me, I think it's... Uh, drink coffee is one of the... Uh, drinking caffeine during... And also maybe sleeping early. Mm. Cause last time I used to sleep very late, like two three a.m. when I'm pregnant. Then you start sleeping earlier and earlier. Mm. So like my last pregnancy, right? I try to sleep at twelve. Oh yeah, try yeah. to work. The the one is try, try to. to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I guess uh, rest is very important. Uh, very very important. for the um uh, development of the baby and stuff like that. Right? Mm. Was your pregnancy easy? Mm. My pregnancy, yeah. uh, uh, I think mine is quite okay because I, I didn't have <coughs> nausea, I didn't like, you know, uh, have problems sleeping. Mm-hmm. I think it only comes at like third trimester, then I started like, having problems sleeping, but it was okay mm-hmm. because I pretty much used to, you know, sleeping. I have slept enough already. I sleep <laughs> in the afternoon, sometimes at night I can't sleep, so it's fine. And uh, when it hits to third trimester, I didn't really work. So just yes, stay home. Uh. And because rest. of yeah, because of COVID also, it's like best to stay home, right? <laughs> <laughs> How about Eunice? Uh for me I think it's uh when my first born, when I'm having my first born and my I think my first one was was an easy one. So what I do is that I just eat, eat, eat every day. I just <laughs> <laughs> so I do, people ask me, Do you have any craving? I say, mm, everything I'm so crazy. So <laughs> there's no there's no to me there's no such thing as craving. <laughs> Basically but, you just crave food. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so my second bond, uh, uh, my second bond was I think not much difference. I said that uh, I think I feel very tired. Yeah, I feel very lethargic during the first trimester. So I I used to sleep a lot, like like same as eating. I used to nap in the afternoon, at night. So I keep sleeping and sleeping because I just feel very lethargic. Mm. So that's that's for me during my pregnancy. Mm. So uh, not very major. Like uh, I don't I don't yeah. vomit. Like so it's still okay. Okay. So it's still quite smooth sailing. Yeah. Like, touch it for your second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I mean, when you go through pregnancy, your body starts to uh, go through multiple changes, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, how how do you feel and like how do you cope? Uh, I cope. Uh, I think during pregnant during pregnancy, right? It's okay because you are just growing bigger. The only thing that you need to change is your wardrobe for me. <laughs> So I just changed my wardrobe to getting all the bigger size clothes. So it's the after pregnancy, uh, after giving birth, that matters to me the most because it's really hard to get back to the size and the weight mm-hmm. that you want. And there's a lot of things like, as uh, like for the stretch marks. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, I think that one is uh unavoidable because, uh, even with the stretch mark cream, I, I'm not I'm not uh so hardworking. I never apply it daily. <laughs> So I got all those stretch marks. That's the only thing that changed in my body. But I feel that all these are better scar. Okay. <laughs> like my better scar. So to me, I think that's the ma- major things that happen to my body. But overall, uh, the next is maybe the hair. Yeah, the hair, hair loss. loss. Yeah. Oh, postpartum hair loss. Yeah, right. Postpartum hair loss. So that's the only thing. Uh, that one, I don't think we can do much about it. Mm-hmm. Like just to make sure that we take care of our hair, wash our hair. Yeah, until the end of the season of the dropping hair. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you all yeah. like get a shock when you all first uh, encounter this hair? I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? uh, I, because uh, many people are talking about you no know, postpartum hair loss and stuff like this. So uh, I pretty pretty much guess I would have because it's like happened to most of the ladies. Mm-hmm. So I just let it fall and then you know, just go for hair treatment and stuff like that. I think it's part and parcel of a pregnancy, postpartum mm-hmm. pregnancy especially. And uh, for pregnancy-wise, my body just get bigger, but I think it's fine because that's how you're gonna be 
mm. and like what Uni say, weight loss, you know, going back to your original size is tough. So, uh, yeah, but it is very hard not to eat because mm. Uh, for us, you're breastfeeding. So if you don't eat, your milk supply will drop, and then you don't want to, you don't want your little one to slim down as well. So I think it's very hard to get away with it unless you stop breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I heard that breastfeeding, uh, you really expend a lot of energy, mm-hmm. a lot of calories. Correct. Yeah. So now since we're on the topic on uh, breastfeeding, uh, how's your both? I guess both of you are still breastfeeding, right? Yeah. Unis yeah. and Ising. Okay, so how's your breastfeeding journey so far? Was it easy or was it very tough? Uh, for me, it was a very tough one okay. because I have a, have a history of okay. My mom has a history of uh, not breastfeeding, and then when I asked my aunt and and so on and so forth, they have never really breastfeed breastfed their, their their children. And for me, is they say firstly was because uh, our body uh, doesn't produce milk as fast as a lot of other other women. We take like about three or four days to actually lactate, and then like even to produce the first colostrum. Mm-hmm. So it's really about being patient. Then uh, secondly, is we our somehow our nipples are like a bit was that flat nipples. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to actually for the the newborn to actually latch on. Mm-hmm. So I actually suffered three or four days of my baby crying to to really latch on. Yeah. So when she finally latched on, but there's so much milk lah. So. <laughs> She still get hungry, so we actually have a standby formula milk over there. But right now, it's uh when we reach around like five, four to five months, right? It's very hard to latch again mm-hmm. because she start to be more interested in a lot of other things. Distracted. Distracted. So when she's hungry, she drink a little bit, and then she start to look around. So she's never really fully fed. So that's when uh we decided to uh go into exclusive pumping as well. Yeah, to pump out the milk for her to drink. Eunice? Uh, for me, my for my first born, uh, it was very tough because I always I heard from my friend that oh, actually breastfeeding very easy. You just put your baby near you, then your baby will drink. So I thought that it's very easy. So for my for my first born, so I didn't read much. I didn't care about it until when it really happens. Then I try to latch on like what Eunice said. Uh, my milk supply also start to kick in a little bit later. So my my boy was crying for three days, three to four days oh, without any milk. Yes. And the people around me keep telling me, uh, why not let it drink formula? Why must you let it drink breast milk? <laughs> so it's the stress level that people are giving. Mm-hmm. So I decided to just uh, go exclusive pumping as well. Mm-hmm. So when I was doing for my first one, it was so hard because no matter how much I pump, I went to do power pumping, like uh, pump for one hour. Pump for one hour every two hour, every two hours pump once for thirty minutes. So it's like almost your whole entire day is pumping. Mm-hmm. And and I'm right, the amount that I get for per pump session is only thirty ml. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people keep telling me to just uh give up. <laughs> yeah, just mm-hmm. give up pumping. But I know that uh breast milk is actually very good for our baby, so I decided to hold on to it until about five to six months when I know I'm having my second one. So that's when I decided to stop breastfeeding. <laughs> So after that, have this history of this, uh, like uh, this journey. I know that my second one, I straight away uh, know how to cope with it. So I immediately went into exclu- exclusive pumping instead. Mm-hmm. So and I'm right now doing uh, right now for my second one. Uh, my milk supply is a lot a lot better, but then uh, I'm still doing exclusive pumping, not latching. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's also good uh. Right, so I guess the motivation for breastfeeding is a, a lot about your baby, right? Yeah. Your baby's nutrition, you know. How do you keep your supply consistent? Mm, eat a lot. For <laughs> <laughs> me, it's eat and then uh, find out the your food booster. Because okay. I asked Eunice, you know, what, what sort of food to eat? Then she said that, you know, it really depends on body. Mm. So I found out that my food booster is beef. Ah, so oh, every beef. time I eat beef, ah. like the next few nights, I will feel wow, a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> and gosh, like, okay. and gosh. So, okay. so I think it's good And then uh, I start to also look at lactation drinks and lactation uh, bites as well mm. I think that helps slightly And also to really, f- if you are exclusive pumping You have to really pump every 3 to 4 hours mm. Yeah, If you are you know, latching your baby, when your baby is hungry, just keep latching on yeah, So it's really, uh, it works when you know, your body are always working mm. And then your milk supply will continue to wait 
people eyes that are looking at me because normally you're at a shopping mall everybody will look at you but they don't help but they just look at you so I'll just ignore their eyes and I'll just uh, push my baby uh, to one corner then normally uh, I'll give them some treats yeah normally when they're outside I'll give them a little bit more treats to allow them to snack mm -hmm. because sometimes they are just uh, they don't they don't like to be cooked inside this in, in their corner they want to be free they want to run around but we cannot let them run around in the shopping mall so most likely I will just give them something to eat to make sure that to stop, mm -hmm. yeah, to stop okay. him from crying okay. but most important thing is not to to ignore whatever other people say or what what other people are like looking at you because mm. their eyes are always uh, looking <laughs> yeah mm. it's inevitable la. yeah okay. and you can't really help it mm. but uh, the main focus should be on the baby yeah okay. Okay. Ah, okay so were there times where like let's say for example uh people around you are doing things that you don't really agree with to your baby like example some mummies i, I know mm. they are not comfortable with a stranger or, or people that they look not, not close to to hug their baby or to carry their baby like were there times like that for your case? Um, for me not really because there's no social distancing so <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad that like during social distancing I mean like during this period like nobody will go near your baby they will just say hi they all know that they must keep a distance they are more conscious right? yeah but definitely like you no. Know, uh, sometimes when you know, your parents or your in-laws will do something that's a bit off your own system mm. Yeah, I, I just have to tell them more. Like, it might be harsh, they might not agree as well, but I think it's always best to educate your own way because uh, parents always have this thing, thing saying that they know more than. But then, right now, whatever we have been through and they have been through, it's maybe the old times really. So, I always let them know that no, all these are, I read from uh, doctors. Yeah. Uh, professionals. <laughs> what, yeah, professionals, yeah, because uh, uni taught me that way. <laughs> So I always show them articles saying that this is what the doctors say, this is what so I think it's better that no uh, do it my way or doing what the doctor says. <laughs> mm. What about you, niece? Uh, I think for my first one they don't have social distancing yet. <laughs> so when like especially in the leaf, so sometimes stranger will tend to like uh, want to touch your baby. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very cautious about it. So what we do is that when we are hugging our baby, right? When somebody wanna come, right? You know that they are coming and we will tilt. <laughs> <laughs> so the person will be touching our arm <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> So I think that's a way for us to protect our baby Because mm -hmm. you might not know that uh, uh, we, are, we are just being blunt uh, We don't know whether the person is a smoker Or the person is the hands are oily or what right. So we just want to protect our baby mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people always say that When your baby falls sick It's not uh, other people fault, but uh, It's not other people that is going to be tired It's the parents that will get tired mm -hmm. So we must protect ourselves and our baby so this is one of the way and another way that uh, if people are very uh, if I don't really like their way of teaching or, or playing with my baby I will let them know mm -hmm. and sometimes like what Ising said I will always use scientific uh, scientific proven. Do proven documents to show them yeah. why I wouldn't allow that to happen mm -hmm. like I would say doctor say one not I say doctor say one doctor say one yeah cannot <laughs> like especially uh, sometimes you drink water mm -hmm. yeah below 6 months old Doctor don't encourage uh, babies to drink water, but in our our times, we always drink water. Yeah. Our parents will say, last time when you are young, we feed you water. Why now cannot? Yeah. Uh. But there's scientific backup saying that uh, we shouldn't uh, encourage water after uh, before six months old. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the things that we will take out yeah. and share. Uh, so there's a lot of like communication and education to the people around you, yes. so that they are also. Uh, equally informed like yourself la. Yes Okay So after being a mother How's your relationship with your spouse? Like, yeah <laughs> Does it bring the whole family closer? Uh, I think so <laughs> <laughs> Of course <laughs> but your spouse so. <laughs> yeah, but I think so uh, I think uh, I think time spent uh, Lovey-dovey It's last past, ten, past tense really But together as a family Yes it's currently now uh. so I think it's different but we still uh, spend a lot of time together sometimes we will try to find a time that we can go out together maybe that's why we, we, we decided to sleep train baby mm -hmm. so you no know, baby is asleep means she's asleep she won't really wake up only wake up like maybe after 5 hours we bring later then go back to sleep so we have the 5 hours to do whatever we want mm -hmm. like we can go out and eat supper or watch a movie together and then oh. we go back to sleep yeah so I think it's how you uh, juggle the time mm -hmm. with baby as well. Mm -hmm. 
for yourself. I'm definitely closer, eh? Hey. <laughs> 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 but I think but I think it's really much uh, we spend more time together, we communicate better together, mm-hmm. and we learn we know each uh, each other's roles as re- responsibility. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when I'm too tired, then he'll take over my role. Aww. So I think it's it's more about helping one another. Mm-hmm. So when we are uh, when we have this baby together, I mean, baby is we have it together. It's not that I want it. <laughs> it's not that I want it. So, I think when we when we know that this is a thing, if this is a baby that we want together. I think we will communicate better so that we are able to help to care for this baby. Because mm-hmm. I think it's a family, and we are no longer the stage like what Ising mentioned. No, no, we, the I mean, we still go out for this. But I think our main focus, main focus is for our baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's always about teamwork. Uh. Yeah. yeah. And partnership, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the word. <laughs> same goal, you know, same focus. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, really communicate and work together. Yeah. yeah and I, I guess it takes a village to raise your child, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you can never do this alone. Alone, correct. Yeah. So, so sounds like um, you have really learned a lot from this motherhood. So, is there any uh, thing that you feel have uh, changed for yourself ever since you became a mother? Or something like the greatest learning lesson for yourself? <laughs> yeah. um, I think <laughs> greatest lesson that I learned is I learned how to sacrifice myself mm-hmm. before uh, for other people. Put others yeah, before for you. Other, yeah, correct. Okay. So, I mean, last time I used to do that, but now it's a completely new game. It's like, whenever I see, uh, I'll put my baby before myself. Well, it's just, it's just a mother thing. Uh. That you definitely uh, do that and also maybe towards my friends I'll tend to be more motherly towards them I will ask them whether they eat already <laughs> <laughs> Whether they drink already yeah. But my, some, some of my friends disagree uh. Disagree? Yeah. I disagree that I'm too motherly <laughs> <laughs> Is it they find that you're naggy? Oh uh, yeah, maybe oh. Yeah, but actually I'm just being motherly <laughs> Okay, mother instinct uh, Yeah, my mother okay. instinct And also something that changed me is Maybe I learn how to take care of early babies. Uh. How to take care of other people better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes last time honestly be, honestly speaking, I'm just maybe no I know how to take care of myself. But right now I can say that I'm better than taking care of other yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I can take care of old people next time. Yeah. Uh, so the no your parents. Yeah, my parents. So I think I think it's a good learning learning curve for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. To learn how to take care of people. Mm-hmm. Okay. For is it? I would say uh um, how to sleep with very little hormones. <laughs> <laughs> how to survive and how to survive and no still function and how to multitask at the same time. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what my husband learned as well. Because sometimes I would uh you know have some uh campaign or engagement at night mm-hmm. so then he have to bathe, feed and make me sleep. And it all happens at the same time. Three in one which means like she wanna sleep, then she needs to bathe and then she wanna drink. Oh. Yeah. So uh that's what happening to me for the past few months uh, and I'm able to survive so my husband learned and then we both survived so I think multitasking is one of the things that we are able to do another thing is we are AI I'm able to sleep like 3-4 hours mm. and yet I can wake up and function properly mm. but I don't think it's a good thing uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try to have more sleep like have some naps mm. with my baby uh, another thing is I think I'm more aware of time mm. like how uh, Know the whole day goals because last time when I was young, when I not know married and not even uh, having a kid, I would uh, take my time to mix. Mm-hmm. But right now, with a baby, I know time is really I have to be specific la, like when to eat, when to bathe, when to everything for her. So I become really on the ball, I would guess. <laughs> and I think the word is on the ball. So last time, maybe you, you can uh, slack and yeah. be yourself. <laughs> maybe I don't even bathe until afternoon. <laughs> But now it's okay, I must bathe first because they're going to wake up with you, so I'm uh, bathe. And you'll plan your day in advance. Correct. Uh, okay, I see. <laughs> sounds very interesting. Yeah, it sounds it's like something that is not me anymore, but yeah, I've I'm, I'm learned that. <laughs> okay, I think that's the greatest gift for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do you have any word of advice for mothers or mothers to be? Mm, I would say uh, go with the flow. <laughs> Uh, more like follow your own mother instinct because I feel it's you know best you know best for the baby mm. okay it's to do anything that will keep your sanity because <laughs> don't care whatever 
People say just do whatever you like and whatever you want. Just keep your sanity. Yeah. Mm. So how do you keep yourself sane? <laughs> uh, I think there's a few there's a few things that I will do. Uh, uh, watch drama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <That's one. laughs> yeah, watch drama. And I think it's to go online shopping. <laughs> Help out. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely right to spend time with your friends and family. Yeah. And so I think spend a alone time together. So you can pamper yourself by going for your own facial, Correct. your own spa, or you can do anything that you have like a alone time, your me time. Mm. Yeah, definitely must have. Important. Important. Very important. Yeah. I guess self care is very important. Yeah. They yeah, always say you cannot pour from an empty empty cup. Mm. Uh, so you must always fill your cup first, then you can pour from other people. So true. So true, yeah. so true, so true, so true. Okay, okay. Thank you so much uh, for your time today. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nising and Eunice, for joining us today. We hope that all mothers understand that this journey of motherhood is not alone and uh, support groups is just a click away. So, self care is also very important. Do not rush yourself into getting back in shape or uh, meeting people's expectations. I think the most important thing is about yourself and your baby. So we hope that uh, this story from Easing and Eunice has helped you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, please remember to like, share and subscribe and comment below on other kind of stories that you would like us to feature. We'll see you during the next episode. Bye!